Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to talk about Kubernetes. The title is uh, Kubernetes Failure of Improvement, Self-Healing of Pod with Persistent Volume When Kubernetes Node is Down. Uh, here is today's agenda. At first, I will talk about Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes failure of issue. I will explain that uh, what is happening when we use Kubernetes in production. And also I will talk about the solution for this issue. Uh, currently, the solution for this issue is discussed in Kubernetes community so that I will introduce it. And finally, I will talk about development status in Kubernetes community and also talk about communication in open source community. I'd like to think about uh, how we can manage to progress with the development in open source community. At first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Yuiko Mori and I'm software engineer. I I joined in Kubernetes community in 2019, and I am mainly contributing for SIG storage and SIG testing. Then uh, I will talk about Kubernetes. Uh, what is Kubernetes? Uh, I just copy and pasted this diagram from Kubernetes.io. Kubernetes is an open source system for automating develop, deployment, scaling, and the management of containerized applications. Kubernetes has many features, and one of the most attractive features is self-healing. Uh, restarts containers that fail, replaces and reschedules containers when nodes die, kills containers that don't respond to your user-defined health check, and doesn't advertise them to clients until they are ready to serve. And then uh, I would like to introduce some terms in Kubernetes. At first, PUD. Pod is a group of one or more application containers and some shared resources for those containers. Then Node. Node is a worker machine in Kubernetes and maybe either a virtual or a physical machine, depending on the cluster. And then Tint. Tint is a property of Pod. Teams are applied to pods and forbid the pods to schedule onto nodes with matching teams. And also, I would like to introduce some terms in Kubernetes related to storage volume. And first, uh, persistent volume. Persistent volume is a piece of storage in the cluster. Next, uh, container storage interface, called as CSI, is a standard for exposing arbitrary block and file storage system to containerize workloads on container orchestration systems like Kubernetes. Using CSI third-party storage providers can write and deploy the plugins exposing new storage systems in Kubernetes without ever having to touch the core Kubernetes code. And I also introduce CSI architecture. CSI driver consists of two plugins. One is node plugin. Here is, uh, basically the node component should be deployed on every node in the cluster through a daemon set. And, 
uh, node plugin uh, communicate with Kubernetes. Let make the CSI node service calls, which mount and unmount the storage volume from the storage system, which making it available to the pod to consume. Another is controller plugin. Here is controller plugin. The controller components uh, can be deployment uh, deployed as a deployment or a stateful set on any node in the cluster. Uh, it consists of the CSI driver uh, that implements the CSI controller service in one or more side local container, like external provisioner or external attacher. These controller side local containers typically interact with Kubernetes object and make calls to the driver's CSI controller service. Then uh, I would like to talk about volume lifecycle in CSI also. This figure uh, represents a lifecycle of volume uh, when we use CSI. And they are uh, names of RPC. And first, uh, when container orchestration system like Kubernetes calls create volume RPC, then volume status would be moved to created. Then, by calling controller published volume RPC, status would be moved from created to not ready. In this RPC, persistent volume is attached to node. And then, by calling node stage volume RPC, status would be moved from node ready to volume ready. And then by calling node publish volume RPC, status would be moved from volume ready to published. In this RPC, persistent volume is mounted to pod. And then these RPC are reverse operation of these RPC. So that in uh, node unpublished volume RPC, uh, this uh, that's unmounted, amount, and also a uh, controller unpublished volume RPC that's detached. Next, I'd like to talk about Kubernetes failover issue uh, self healing of pod with persistent volume when Kubernetes node is down. Well, uh, there are two pods on a node, node one, and the persistent volume, the name is PV1. PV1 is attached to node one. When node, e, node 1 is down due to hardware failure, we expect uh, these two things. One is that uh, two pods on node 1 will be created on node 2 newly. Another is that PV1 will be detached from node 1 and attached to node 2. But actually, two pods on node one are created on node two newly. That's good. Uh, but PV1 is not detached from node two. Uh, sorry, uh, PV1 is not detached from node one. Uh, that's not what we expect, right? 
Why this issue happen? I'd like to talk about the reason. Currently, persistent volume is not allowed to detach from node when volume attachment exists. Volume attachment is information about attachment of node and storage. It means a uh, persistent volume is not detached yet. Volume attachment resource can be delete, deleted only in the case that volume is already unmounted. So that we, we need a new flow which detach persistent volume from node uh, even if node is down. And also I would like to explain what occur in volume life cycle in CSI when this issue happen. When this issue happen in volume life cycle in CSI, we cannot call any RPC which are done by node plugging uh, due to node failure. Next, uh, I would like to talk about the solution for this issue. In Kubernetes community, CAP has been posted so that I will introduce it. And first, uh, I'd like to introduce what is CAP. CAP is a way to propose, communicate, and coordinate on new new efforts for the Kubernetes project. You can see uh, the detail in this page. The reason why we need CAP is uh, having a CAP in one place will make it easier for people to track what is going, to, going on going in the community and find a structured historical record, especially in case that new feature someone wants to propose has impact to two or more projects, CAP makes sense. Because everyone in different SIG feel easy to review. Then uh, I'd like to introduce the CAP number 1116. This CAP proposes a, a solution for the Kubernetes failover issue. The title is uh, Add no graceful node shutdown. Uh, you can see this cap with this URL. We check it. The goal of this cap are that uh, at first uh, increase the availability of stateful workload when a node is shut down. And uh, automate self-healing for stateful workloads. And uh, no goal of this cap. One is that uh, node or control plane partitioning other than a node shutdown is not covered by the pro proposal, but will be addressed in the future and built on top of this top of this design. Second is uh, implement in cluster logic to handle node or control plane partitioning. And uh, enable detach for all the storage providers and uh, existing in three volume are not targeted by this proposal. Uh, this cap just uh, targets uh, CSI. And then I would like to talk about uh, what will be changed in CSI volume lifecycle by this cap. This cap proposes a new flow like this. 
and new states. So I will introduce them. And first, uh, quarantined S and quarantined SP are new status for the case. We cannot call node unpublished volume or node unstaged volume RPC. When uh, volume status is published and uh, node down, we will be able to call controller unpublished volume fenced. So status would be changed from published to quarantine SP. And then by calling a uh, node unpublished volume host RPC, status would be changed from quarantined SP to quarantined S. And then by calling node unstaged volume host RPC, status would be changed from quarantined S to create it. And then I would like to introduce the solution which the CAP proposes. When node one is down due to hardware failure, pod DC controller in Kube controller manager deletes codes on node one. Then the pod DC controller would also apply a quarantine tint on the node one. Quarantine tint is also a new tint which this cap proposes. This should happen before the pods are being evicted. When this tint is applied to the node, new pods should not be scheduled on the node. Then the attach detach controller in Kube controller manager skip checking whether volume is still mounted and the delete volume attachment resource. Volume attachment resource is uh, information about attachment of node and storage. When, uh, when the external attacher here detects the volume attachment object is being deleted, then external attacher will call CSI drivers controller unpublished volume RPC. When controller unpublished volume RPC called, a CSI driver ensure that PV1 is not being used. And then PV1 will be detached from node one. This is called a storage fencing. Uh, one example of storage fencing is that Persistent volume has a list named access control list. With uh, ACL, uh, we can manage which node can be, uh, which node can access to the persistent volume. So that by deleting this data of node one from ACL in PV1, uh, node one cannot access to PV1. And then ports will be created on node two newly. And also PV1 
will be detached. Uh, mm, PV1 will be attached to node 2. That's good. Next, uh, I will talk about communication in open source community. As I said, uh, we are discussing on CAP number 1116. This CAP was uh, posted in 2017 so that we have been discussing about this issue over four years. Uh, you know, it's very long. The reason why merging this cap takes so long time is, uh, I guess uh, there are three reasons. One is that uh, there are so many use cases which we want to cover. The second reason is that this cap impacts uh, multi multiple projects. The third reason is the matter related to release cycle. Uh, I will talk these reasons in detail in next slide. The first reason, uh, there are many use cases which want to cover. For example, uh, when a shutdown command is executed. In this case, uh, this can be solved by graceful shutdown feature. Graceful shutdown feature is a feature which enables Kubernetes to gracefully evict pods during a node shutdown so that we can set grace period to the node. But uh, in order to cover cases related to node failure, like uh, when node hardware is broken or when Kubernetes is unresponsible, uh, they cannot be sold by risk for shutdown feature because uh, when node is down, amount cannot be done, so persistent volume cannot be detached from node. And also, uh, it seems like there would be more use cases uh, like uh, uh, network network failure. So that uh, in order to solve this matter, uh, for example, listing up all use cases and uh, explaining them clearly in CAP seems a good solution. The second reason, uh, impact multiple projects. This issue, uh, crossover SIG storage, uh, which handles storage in the SIG node, uh, which handles node, including Kubernetes. So in order to progress with this de de development, it needs both SIG agreement. This cap was posted by SIG Storage's member and only SIG Storage members had discussed. Then recently, uh, SIG Nodes member has partitioned to participate to discussion so that uh, clarifying stakeholders can make appropriate decision, I think. The third reason, matter related to release cycle. This is current release cycle of Kubernetes. Uh, you can see the period of enhancement freeze is very short. And also after enhancement freeze, uh, developers are too busy at other works to continue uh, discussion on CAP. Uh, as a solution of this matter, uh, always be aware of release cycle or to check the progress of CAP in weekly meeting seems good. Summary. 
uh, Kubernetes is used in production and also said uh, production readiness. But when we use Kubernetes in production, uh, we often or sometimes feel inconvenient or face up issues. In such cases, we can share these issues and solve them in community. Uh, in this presentation, I explained one of such topics around pod cell healing. If you are interested in this issue, please join us in our discussion. Thank you for listening. That's, that's all. Bye-bye.